we'll start our discussion of biomolecules with lipids. Lipids are sort of an unusual grouping because they are only classified because they have one characteristic in common, and that is that they are soluble in organic solvents, nonpolar substances, and are not soluble in water. There are other classes of biomolecules that are not soluble in water, but they will be following a different designation because of their structure. So for the lipids, they're just the ones that we can identify that are not soluble in water but aren't classified as one of the other groups. We find lipids throughout the body. In fact, they are essential constituents of all cells. Get rid of this word practically. We find that they are concentrated in the cell membrane. They are what creates the cell membrane. They are also found in the brain and nervous tissue commonly. In our body, these lipids are used to store energy, and this is a form of long-term energy storage. We can't use it quickly, but we can use it to store all of our energy. When we eat too much, it's stored as lipids. And finally, we can look at them as insulators. They can insulate vital organs against shock and temperature change. So when we talk about shock, normally we think of electrical shock. And because these are nonpolar, they are not ionic, they do protect against electrical shock. But they also protect against physical shock, which means that when something bounces, the organs don't get damaged. And to help you think about this, think about Santa with his belly full of lipids. When he laughs, you can see that it jiggles. Those lipids wiggling around serve as a protective device so that the stuff inside just gets like a big cushion around it. So you don't want to lose all of your fat because then you may damage your organs due to that loss of fat and those organs not having a protective layer around them. You should have a small layer of fat around your liver and your heart and many of your internal organs. Those lipids also protect against temperature changes. So you'll notice that the animals that we find in very cold environments tend to have a lot of fat on them. So you'll see there's a, a lot of blubber in a whale. You'll see seals. You'll see uh, sea lions. And walruses all have a lot of fat on them. And that's to protect them from the cold. We also see that otters and birds often have a large amount of these lipids in their fur or feathers, and that protects them from the cold. For this section, we're going to talk about the different classes of lipids, and there are six of them, and you'll be asked to know which class of lipid we're talking about dependent upon what parts are present. So the first thing we're going to look at is what are those classes, and they are triglycerides, phosphoglycerides, sphingolipids, glycolipids, steroids, and fat-soluble vitamins. When we look at the triglycerides, we see that they are made up of glycerol and three fatty acids. Phosphoglycerides have glycerol, two fatty acids, a phosphate, and an amino alcohol. You'll need to know what all the parts are for each of these classes. Sphingolipids have sphingosine, we'll talk about that later, a fatty acid, a phosphate group, and an amino alcohol. So notice that both phosphoglycerides and sphingolipids have amino alcohols in them. Then we have glycolipids. Glycolipids are composed of either sphingosine or glycerol, dependent upon which one we're looking at, and one or two fatty acids, again, dependent upon which one we're looking at, and one or more monosaccharides. The key here is that the glycolipids have a monosaccharide present. And then we have steroids, which are, have a steroid nucleus, and then we look at the fat-soluble vitamins last. So these are all classified together, again, because of their common characteristic in the fact that they do not like water and therefore are insoluble in water. Notice that the first four classes all have something called a fatty acid in them. So we're going to talk about the fatty acids next, and I want you to note, fatty acids are not lipids. They are part of these types of lipids, but they are by themselves not considered lipids. In the next few videos, we're going to talk about each of these classes individually. At the end of each section, I would like you to take the notes and summarize them onto this page. That'll help you for preparation for the exam if you can kind of see all of it in one place, not quite as spread out as they are in the notes.